Oh my gosh. People are watching this woman pop their pimples? Oh. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Wuga, and I will be putting my dietitian hat on to look at the research on diet and acne. Because let's be real, the stress of this pandemic and the 24 seven mask situation has probably been pretty rough on our skin. So while you should always speak to a dermatologist about your unique skincare needs, as I'm not a doctor or a dermatologist, today I'm going to be providing some evidence-based recommendations and I'll be popping those pimple myths on the best and worst foods for your skin. But first let's talk about my sponsor, Wuga. Everyone who knows me knows that I love a good murder mystery. I have exhausted my Netflix options for all things true crime. So as I've been waiting for something new to watch, I discovered June's Journey by Wuga on my phone. So this is a really cool hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s, available for free on Android and Apple mobile devices and on desktop through Amazon or Facebook. I heard about it through a friend and apparently it has a really huge following with more than 30 million people playing this thing worldwide. I honestly was never really a gamer, but I actually really like this game because it requires some critical thinking skills. It has a solid storyline and beautiful, colorful graphics set in the glamorous 1920s. It's definitely been a really nice distraction from the stress of COVID and also a more active alternative to just watching TV. So if you need a little escape, check out the link in my description to download June's Journey on one of your devices for free today. But before we dive in, you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on a video. All right, let's begin by breaking down the common causes of acne. So acne forms when our pores become clogged by dead skin cells, bacteria, or excess oil, often as a result of certain makeup products, genetics, medications, sun exposure, and of course, fluctuating hormones. Or you know, when you wear a crappy cotton mask you bought on Etsy every single day for an entire year. Side note, wear your damn mask. Moving on, mask me aside, hormones are definitely a biggie for contributing to pimples anywhere on your face or body. And it's definitely one factor that we can't so easily manipulate like we can our beauty regimen. Puberty, menstruation, pregnancy, menopause, and birth control can all cause changes in our hormones. So for example, low levels of estrogen and higher levels of testosterone can increase oil production, clog our pores, and ultimately lead to zits. This is why a lot of us break out during that time of the month and why 70% of women with acne present with high testosterone levels. So obviously we can't always do a whole lot about our hormones, but can we change the outcome for our skin with what we eat? Well, not surprisingly, research in this area is mixed and controversial since the look and feel of our skin, like everything else about our body, is somewhat genetically determined and highly individual. So I absolutely cannot make sweeping statements suggesting that you cut out specific foods or add other ones in, as there's no such thing as a universally understood anti-acne diet that will make you look like you face-tuned, but in real life. However, the population research that we do have does draw some correlations and most of them are rooted in the typical Western diet. So what's going on with this whole Western diet that makes us break out like a prepubescent teen? Well, when people discuss the Western diet, they're talking in colloquial terms about a diet high in refined sugars and low in fiber rich fruits and vegetables. We know that consuming an excess of refined carbs without adequate protein or fat to help slow down its digestion and absorption can increase blood sugar levels and subsequently insulin. Insulin is related to a few other hormone shifts which also may play a role in acne production. So one is an increase in testosterone which we established is a hormone that can increase oil secretion. This could help explain why acne is often a common side effect of hormonal conditions that are associated with excess testosterone and insulin resistance like PCOS. 
The other hormone linked to insulin levels is called insulin-like growth factor, or IGF-1, which also can potentially rev up the oil factor as well. So what do we do about these greasy ass hormones? Well, let's talk about some super general diet recommendations that may help some people manage their breakouts. And notice that I say some people here, cause again, this is not a one size fits all prescription. So it could take a little bit of experimentation. Number one, swapping high for low glycemic index carbs. For those unfamiliar with the glycemic index, it essentially categorizes carbohydrate containing foods by how fast they increase our blood sugar levels. Since the Western diet tends to contain greater amounts of high GI or high glycemic index carbs like white bread, potatoes, pastries, and sugar sweetened drinks, it's often suggested that we can reduce the pimple producing insulin related hormone cascade simply by reducing the glycemic load of our meals. So what does the research say? Well, one 2017 study found that participants with moderate to severe acne consumed more refined carbs compared to participants without acne. Another large study also found that frequent consumption of high glycemic index foods was associated with a 30% increase in acne development among teens. Research on adults in a more recent 2020 study found that those with acne were 54% more likely to consume high sugar foods compared to those with clearer skin. Finally, to compare the effects of low GI versus high GI foods on acne development, one review looked into the prevalence of acne in indigenous groups across different geographical locations. Not surprisingly, the incidence of acne was lower in populations who consumed a low GI diet, and as the consumption of high GI foods increased in these groups, so too did the prevalence of their zits. So does that mean that everybody should be going on like a keto diet? Hell no. Hell no, no, to the no, no. There's lots of carbohydrate containing foods that are lower on the glycemic index that you can include more often. So things like veggies, some fruits, fiber rich whole grains and legumes. And these foods may actually be protective against a wide range of health concerns, acne included. So for example, Population research suggests that non-Western populations consuming a low glycemic index diet rich in fruits, veggies, nuts, meats, and whole grains have a comparatively lower incidence of acne. Meanwhile, in randomized control trials, one study tested a low GI diet intervention for three months and found that it helped to reduce testosterone, IGF-1 levels, and breakouts in young men with acne. Similarly, another small trial found that following a low GI diet for two and a half months also resulted in acne improvements. So to recap, when we eat an excess of high glycemic index foods, our blood sugar levels go up, which stimulates the release of insulin, which increases the level of IGF-1 and testosterone, which revs up that oil production, which in turn can clog our pores and cause acne. Now, all of this information is again, not to encourage you to cut out all the high glycemic index foods in your diet, but it comes down to trying to limit consuming a lot of naked carbs. That is, we want to consume the majority of our carbs with a source of protein or fat to help slow down the blood sugar and consequently the insulin response. So this could mean pairing a high glycemic index food like jasmine rice with things like chickpeas, cashews, and veggies for some protein, fiber, and fat. Or you could smear that white bread with some avocado and top it off with some veggies and an egg. My longtime subbies are probably saying in their head already, but it all comes down to the hunger crushing combination. Fiber, protein, and fat. That trio is not just for satiety, but it also may be for clear skin as well. Next, let's talk about trialing dairy free. So dairy is usually the first thing that I hear people talking about removing from their diet when they're struggling with pesky little breakouts. And while it definitely may help a lot of folks with skin struggles, the research in this area is not perfectly conclusive. One 2018 review found that people who consume dairy milk were 16% more likely to have acne than those who don't, 
And another large 2018 review found that dairy consumption was associated with the greater risk of acne, regardless of frequency or amount consumed. However, another 2016 review found only a weak association between dairy and acne. So it's likely that there's something there, but it's not 100% clear and it may not ring true for everyone. While dairy is low on the glycemic index, one theory for its role in breakouts is that it may stimulate the production of IGF-1 in the blood, which again we established may kind of boost that oil production. We don't know for sure why this is, but there are some theories that it may be related to natural or artificial growth hormones, lactose sensitivity, or milk proteins like casein and whey. Interestingly, some research suggests that higher fat dairy may be easier on skin than things like skim milk, likely because the fat may act as kind of like a bit of a buffer to some of those insulin and hormonal cascade effects. But this is more of a theory than anything and also not so well substantiated in the literature since other research has found a positive association with the consumption of all milk, including skim, low fat, and full fat. Regardless, again, obviously not everyone breaks out after consuming dairy and the evidence isn't so cut and dry. I know personally I have no issues with any kind of dairy, but if you consume a lot of it and you're struggling with frequent breakouts, it might be worth a trial to go dairy free. Thankfully, there's a ton of great dairy free alternatives on the market today. I just typically recommend looking for one that's fortified with calcium and vitamin D and ideally one that has some protein like pea milk or soy. Next, make Fish Friday a weekly treat. I'm talking here about omega-3s and no, don't come at me. Catch me outside, how about that? You do not have to get them from fish, I was just saying that. But we do know that omega-3s have a variety of anti-inflammatory properties and we also have evidence to suggest that they may also play a role at reducing breakouts by lowering IGF-1. One large study found that teens who ate more omega-3 rich fish and seafood had less acne than their fish phobe friends, while another study found that people who took omega-3 supplements were able to simultaneously improve both their acne and their mood. Bonus, love me a good happy skin day. So in addition to fatty fish like salmon, trout, sardines, and mackerel, you can also find omega-3s in walnuts, flax, omega-3 enriched eggs, and of course in fish oil supplements or algae oil. Next, let's talk about eating the rainbow and getting your antioxidant fix. So you've probably heard a million boring ass PSAs, a diet rich in fruits and vegetables can help to reduce your risk of chronic disease. True, of course, but let's be real. If you are a millennial or Gen Z, you've probably kind of tuned those recommendations out because do you really give a about your risk of heart attack or stroke? No, probably not. You want to look snatch in your I just woke up like this selfie. Well, good news lovers, because it turns out that foods that are rich in antioxidants are also good for your skin. One 2008 population study found that people who suffered from acne had lower levels of antioxidants like vitamins A and E in their blood while another study found that when acne sufferers supplemented with antioxidants like vitamin E and selenium, their skin condition improved. We definitely do need more quality research when it comes to actual supplementation and dosages, so I can't make any solid recommendations on that. But considering that antioxidants are naturally found in so many nutritious foods, most of which are also low glycemic index, which we already established are skin friendly, there really is no harm in including them in your diet. You can find antioxidants in foods like nuts, berries, artichokes, leafy greens, red cabbage, beans, beets, grapes, green tea, and orange veggies. Basically, you don't need to do anything that intentional or necessarily take any expensive supplements. Just eat a colorful, varied diet to get the most beauty bang for your buck. And speaking of beauty vitamins, let's talk about everyone's favorite sunshine vitamin, vitamin D. 
Vitamin D is often cited as the cure-all for legit everything from anxiety to COVID to the pimple on your chin from said anxiety and COVID. One correlational study found that half of the people with acne suffered from vitamin D deficiency, and then when they supplemented those deficient with about 1,000 IUs of vitamin D for two months, their breakouts started to resolve. These findings were also echoed in a more recent 2020 study where the authors theorized that the outcome was potentially linked to vitamin D's natural anti-inflammatory properties. Now, while food sources are limited to things like fatty fish, mushrooms exposed to UV light, and fortified dairy, plant milk, cereals, and eggs, we can maximize our intake from sun exposure and supplementation. Finally, let's talk about chocolate for a hot minute because this is one I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about in the comment section. First of all, there's actually not a whole lot of good research to suggest that there's anything special or inherent about chocolate when it comes to acne risk. One review found a very weak association between chocolate and acne, but they also found a number of major flaws in research study designs. Most significantly, a lot of the studies to date have not controlled for the type of chocolate used in their experiments. And that's kind of important since we know that both sugar and dairy products may play a role in acne and milk chocolate candy bars are significantly higher in both of these compared to, let's say, a higher quality dark chocolate bar. So obviously, if you're like me and you really only like the cheap Mars bars or the Reese's peanut butter cups, and you find that sugar and dairy products causes you to break out, yeah, you might wanna watch your intake. But if you're just looking to throw a little cocoa powder into your smoothie or enjoy a square of 85% dark chocolate, you might be in the clear. So in conclusion, you all need to know that there is no one size fits all model when it comes to the anti-acne diet. So do not use this list as like a Bible of what you need to include or cut out of your diet. The research in this area is pretty spotty and not cut and dry. The same way that some people like may get a tummy ache or fatigue from gluten and others may not. Some people may get pimples from cheese and others may not. Some of us are just blessed with clear skin and others are waking up covered in spots on the regular. The bottom line is always speak to a certified dermatologist to find the best solution for you, which may or may not include making changes to what you eat. But on that note, that is all for you guys today. Thank you again to Wooga for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on what you'd like to see me cover next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.